Monkey Monkey. Welcome to a little more in-depth episode of my House of Love. You know, technology really is a wonderful thing. Aside from the varying grotesqueries of social media, which admittedly can keep us in touch with friends and family from across the entire globe, we have created computing portable enough and powerful enough that you can create entire worlds on a device that fits in your pocket. Even as recently as 30 years ago, this would have been considered inconceivable. And yet, the technologies of that age were no less wondrous. Or so they seemed at the time. All of which brings us to the lens through which we shall view this topic. The Wild Demo Quadcore, by the demo scene group Singular Crew. Released in September 2017, Quadcore is a set of four productions meant to be simultaneously played on four C64 machines. There's no plot, characters, or story, just a collection of video effects and a nice tune played over 12 channels. But I'm already far, far ahead of myself. What is this demo scene? Why would anyone create even one program for a long dead system like the Commodore 64? Let alone try and synchronise four at once. And what is a wild demo? Well, before we get to wild demos, let's start with demos in general. Now, a demo is a program for your computer. When you run a demo, it'll usually run some kind of real-time generated visual effects with some form of audio accompaniment. Usually a nice tune, occasionally some kind of background ambience, but it's mostly real-time generated visuals and sound. The mainstream platforms for demos are considered to be the Commodore 64, the Commodore Amiga, and the Windows-based PC owing to the fact that these were the systems that most people owned at the time, or own today. There are, of course, a plethora of other computer formats, across past and present, which harbour their own demo scenes. The Sinclair ZX Spectrum is very popular in Russia, and across the Eastern Bloc. Another computer by Commodore, the C16 and Plus 4, had some success in Hungary. Amstrad's CPC was somewhat popular in France, and the BBC Micro by Acorn is not completely without demo scene love. Indeed, demos have even appeared on consoles from the Humble Ness all the way up to the PlayStation 3. Wild demos, on the other hand, are demos that run on hardware outside of what is considered mainstream. But we'll get to that. For now, let's begin at the beginning. The earliest demo-like effects were run on repurposed visual hardware from computing systems of the 1950s and 1960s. Most recordings of these are considered art animations rather than actual demos. Our story really starts with the home computing era of the 1980s. In the notoriously turbulent 1980s, as the home computer was born from scientific curiosity and technological tinkering, families would buy home computers for their children to help with learning, and possibly do the household accounts. But kids, as they are wont to do, would be more interested in video games. Now, the earliest days of the video game industry are discussed in the excellent documentary From Bedrooms to Billions. However, there was a sense that the commercial exploitation of digital data was theft. Or someone somewhere had just gotten the latest game and loved it so much that they just had to share it with their friends. For whatever reason, piracy was born. And from piracy, anti-piracy measures, such as copy protection. Of course, as high-tech as they seemed in the early 80s, 8-bit systems were actually rather basic, and the copy protection was also rather basic. And so, the crackers of the time 
would easily find their way around the copy protection, usually adding some kind of mark or notifier to say that this game had been cracked, which quickly became introductory screens with animated logos, text, and occasionally music. This then is the genesis of the demo, originally a letter or message, owing to the fact that there would most likely be a scrolling text message contained therein. To this day, some productions still feature scrolling messages, usually poetry, or the musings of one or more of the programmers. And with the march of time, and the unrelenting forward progress of technology, as software and hardware evolved, the demo scene evolved along with it. C64 demos became Amiga demos, became DOS demos, became Windows demos, and so on up to the present day, where Android and iOS devices have been coded for. And as time moved on, the limits were gradually eroded, as across memory sizes, visual colour spaces and resolutions, and sound, the sky became the limit. Although, not everyone is so enamoured of a world without limits. And so we find ourselves in the present day, where the supposedly classic or retro systems are still feeling the love of demo scene coders, some of whom have taken their beloved platforms to strange new heights. And yet, even among the rebellious subculture of the demo scene, there are still more rebellious types who eschew the usual suspects and seek to forge their own path. Demo scene resource poet.net. Poe.net? I'll put it up on screen. Lists many different kinds of production as wild. Indeed, the Breakpoint Demo Party and its successor, the Revision Demo Party, separates the wild category from the animations and videos. Mostly because animations and videos are mostly short films with demoish effects that are pre-rendered. These might look more visually stunning, but they are pre-rendered. Wild, on the other hand, encompasses such delights as self-built platforms, LED matrices, cash till and electronic typewriter displays, oscilloscopes hooked up to a PlayStation, and other such mind-boggling fare. And of course, while most demos are locked to a single screen, being that most systems could only drive a single screen without extra hardware until very recently, wild demos can run across several different screens at once, or even none. Why, one enterprising fellow even turned a grid of several windows in a high-rise tower into its own pixel matrix of sorts. All of which brings us back to our main example, Quadcore by Singular Crew. As I mentioned, a lot of people in the early 80s owned a Commodore 64, so it became a mainstay for the demo scene. Singular Crew started making their demos in 1995, but I don't think that anyone, let alone any of Singular Crew, have ever attempted something like this before. While not technically amazing, outside of the fact of running four C64s in perfect synchronisation is a technically impressive feat in and of itself, or overly aesthetically compelling, it remains the first, and only, to my knowledge, multiple system demo production for the Commodore 64. The graphics by Poison and Leon are functional enough, outside of a very nice pixel art piece of a deer in a woodland clearing. The music by Vincenzo, who is actually a professional musician, features some very nice harmonies, given the extended range of four SID chips to work across. All in all, Quad Core by Singular Crew is more than worthy of my house of love, as is its sister production, Single Core, which is a regular demo for a single C64. If you'd like to know more, or if you'd like to see any of the demos I featured today, I'll leave a link to them in the video description. Also down there are my crowdfunding links, if you're feeling extra awesome. And don't forget to give the subscribe button some love. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and good demos. So long, folks!